This video is brought to you by Squarespace. I shoot a lot of videos and obviously I edit them too because come on, the videos are not going to be edited by themselves. I have been using Final Cut Pro for the last 4 years and I have a workflow when it comes to color correction and color grading my videos. I will be explaining all the tools in Final Cut Pro starting from basic all the way to advanced which will help you in color grading your videos and also share my workflow and some tips to make the overall process a lot faster and easier. If you are a Premiere Pro user, there's already a video about Premiere Pro on this topic. Go ahead and watch that. In case you are a Final Cut Pro user, you people are going to learn a lot of things. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Before I start color correction and color grading, I change my workspace. Go to Window, Workspaces, Color and Effects. Here you will see you have a lot of different options. Let's focus on one thing at a time. First, I like to correct my exposure and contrast. I'm using color boards for that and on the left side, I have my Luma waveform which gives me the complete information about the exposure of the video. Here in the color board, we have color, saturation and exposure. Let's correct the exposure first. The master slider changes the overall exposure but we are not going to use that. This is for shadows, this is for midtones and this is for highlights and that's what we have to focus on. This is a very flat video because it was shot in log format. Now we have to fix that. I'll go to the frame that I'll use for reference. The reason for using Luma waveform is when adjusting the shadows and highlights, you have to make sure you don't underexpose or overexpose anything. The numbers you see here will help you to do that. 0 means complete black, 100 means complete white. In the middle, you have your midtones. Below that you have shadows and above that you have your highlights. Now, when you're increasing the contrast, the idea is to increase the highlights and decrease the shadows, increasing the difference between them. Now, if you go below 0, you have lost the details in the shadows because now it's completely black. Similarly, if you go above 100, the highlights now are completely white. If you want to make the midtones brighter or darker, just move it up or down. This is a very quick and simple way to fix the exposure and contrast. The other two options in the color board are color and saturation. It works exactly in the same manner. While dealing with colors, I like to use the vector scope and RGB parade. Talking about saturation, you can change the overall saturation or you can do it for shadows, midtones and highlights separately. Move it up to increase the saturation and move it down to decrease the saturation. For this one, I am increasing the overall saturation a bit and in the shadows a bit. In the color panel, you can change the colors in different areas. You can adjust the overall colors with the master option or do it separately. Like for example, if you want to add a bit of warm colors to the highlights, just move the highlights to the warmer color. And if you want to add a bit of cooler tones to the shadows, just move the shadow slider to the color you want. While making these changes, as I said before, I use the vector scopes and RGB parade for references. Even if the colors are not accurate in the video, these can be used to understand where the problem is and you can fix them accordingly. You can make color changes in the color board, but I don't use it because personally I feel there are better options. The next option is color curves. Be it photo or video editing, I love using curves. They are very easy to use, very flexible and very powerful. I actually have a very in-depth video about tone curves and I highly recommend you to watch that. We have four different curves as you can see, Luma, Red, Green and Blue. In short, this point is responsible for the blacks, this is for the whites, this is for the highlights, midtones and shadows. If you want to increase or make something brighter, just move it up. Here, I want the shadows to be a bit darker, so I will move it down. If you want that faded cinematic look, just raise the black point a bit. One feature that I really like is the picker option. Suppose you want to raise the brightness of this particular area, but you don't know where does it belong exactly, whether in the midtones or in the highlights. Just use this option and click on the area you want to target and you will see a point being added on the graph. Now depending on whether you want to make it brighter or darker, just move it accordingly. 
The best thing about the tone curve is you can add n number of points and make those adjustments. The RGB curves work in the similar manner but they don't affect the exposure, they affect the colors. Suppose you want to add a bit of red in the highlights, just go to the highlights part and move it up. Similarly, if you want to add blue to the shadows, you can do that too. Now if I reduce the blues, you can see the yellow color being added and the reason for that is opposite of blue is yellow. Just remember this chart and you're good to go. The next option is color wheels but before I talk about it, it's time to give a shout out to the sponsors of the video and that is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform which you can use to build an online store, portfolio or a website. If you are a photographer, a filmmaker or any type of artist, a website is something that's going to be super unique and super helpful for you. You want to showcase your work, you want to sell your work, Squarespace is there for you. They have amazing looking templates that you can choose from and customize the way you want it to. It's super easy. You don't even have to worry about the coding or any of the complicated stuff. Squarespace will do it for you. So if you need a website, I would highly recommend to use Squarespace. The link is in the description below. Once you click on the link, the good news is you will get 10% off on your first purchase. Talking about color wheels, we have four wheels here. Master, Shadows, Midtones and Highlights. The slider you have on the right side adjusts the exposure and the one on the left adjusts the saturation. It is very similar to the color board but here you get everything in one place. There is no better option as such, it's just a personal preference. You can also add colors as we saw in the color board to different areas. If your video is too warm and you want to cool it down or vice versa, you can use the temperature and the tint slider for it. Below you get the same controls just in the form of normal sliders. The final option we have is Hue Saturation Curves. This is really interesting. Before we start using this, let's quickly understand how these work. You have X versus Y. You can make points or use the marker tool to set points in X and adjust the Y. Let's start using them and you will have a better understanding. This one is hue versus saturation. When you're setting points, you're selecting a particular color because you're selecting hue since X is hue. When you're adjusting it, you're changing the saturation because Y is saturation. Similarly, if I want to change the brightness, I will use, yes you guessed it right, hue versus luma. So I'm selecting a color because X is hue but since Y is luma, adjusting the points will change the brightness. You want to change the color itself, use hue versus hue. Again, you have a lot of curves but hope you get the point. They work exactly in the same manner. You choose the point in X and adjust the Y. This is great for making targeted adjustments especially if you're dealing with colors. To take targeted adjustments to a next level, we are going to use masks. The good thing about Final Cut Pro color panel is you can add multiple adjustments. For example, I can add two different curves layer or color board whatever you want. I use multiple layers when I'm dealing with masks. In Final Cut Pro, you have two different mask options, color mask and shape mask. Depending on what kind of selections you want to make, you can use these masks. Let's talk about shape mask. You can change the shape of the mask from a rectangle to an oval to a complete circle. You can also adjust the feathering of the mask and that's it. You can see the mask by clicking on view masks. Now whatever adjustment you make will only be applied to the mask created. Now as you can see the subject is moving but the mask is not. To fix that I will use keyframes and track the subject manually. More the keyframes better will be the tracking. The next one is color mask which again is super useful. Use the picker option select the color. You can also select multiple shades of color. And if you want to add other colors, you can hold shift and add them. If you want to remove the colors, hold alt and remove them. You can also adjust the softness of the mask or use the hue saturation luminance values and fine tune the mask you have created. These are very advanced options but super useful for targeted adjustments. You can also use multiple masks 
to make the selection even more specific. Here, suppose I want this color to be selected but only for this specific area. So, I will use a color mask and a shape mask on top of it. As we saw before, we could do these adjustments with the hue saturation curves as well. But that's the point, there are different tools by which you can achieve the same result but it all depends upon what you're comfortable with and what's your usual workflow. I would recommend to try out different tools and then find out what works best for you. At the end of my color grade, I like to add a bit of vignetting to add more focus at the center part of the frame. You can change the position of the vignette, the intensity and also the fall off to adjust the feathering. At the end, if you want to copy your adjustments, press command plus C, go to edit, paste attributes and you can select exactly what you want to be pasted. I prefer using adjustment layer on top of the videos, personally I feel it's a better option. There is no built in adjustment layer in Final Cut Pro, so I'll give a link where you can download it for free. That's it from this video guys, I hope you people enjoyed the video and learned how to color grade on Final Cut Pro. If you people like the video, press the like button. If you're new to the channel, for more such helpful content, subscribe to the channel as well. I'll talk to you guys in the next one, bye.